To begin with this video, we will summarize some results from Hamiltonian mechanics that will be required later on. In the Hamiltonian formulation of classical mechanics, the state of a system is described in terms of its phase space coordinates, which include the generalized coordinates and the conjugate generalized momenta. The Hamiltonian of the system is a function of all the generalized coordinates, generalized momenta, and time. The time rate of change of these coordinates and momenta can now be written in terms of the partial derivatives of the Hamiltonian. There are two equations for each set of P and Q and are called Hamilton's equations of motion. Now for two quantities, F and G, which depend explicitly on the phase space coordinates and time, we define their Poisson bracket by this expression. I'll wait for a moment to let that sink in. As a first example of Poisson brackets in action, we look at the time evolution of the quantity f. Using the chain rule, we expand the total time derivative in terms of partial derivatives with respect to all phase space coordinates and time. We note that the partial time derivatives of q and p are equivalent to their total time derivatives as both p and q only depend on time. Substituting the values for q dot and p dot from the Hamilton's equations, we find that the first quantity is a Poisson bracket of f and h. We have thus arrived at an equation of motion of the quantity f. Quite often we will come across quantities which do not have explicit time dependence and only evolve in time through q and p. In such a case the partial time derivative vanishes. We also notice that if the Poisson bracket of a quantity with the Hamiltonian is zero, then the value of such a quantity does not change with time and hence it is called a conserved quantity or a constant of motion. Let's see what happens when we take Poisson brackets of phase space coordinates among themselves. We start with the bracket of QK and PL. The coordinates are independent of each other, so the second term evaluates to zero, while the first term evaluates to Kronecker deltas due to the same reason. The sum then evaluates to a Kronecker delta of k and l. We now have the result that the Poisson bracket of a generalized coordinate and generalized momenta is equal to 1 if the momenta is conjugate to the coordinate, that is, they both carry the same index, otherwise it is 0. Similarly it can be shown that the brackets of q's among themselves and p's among themselves always evaluate to 0. Now let's try to evaluate the Poisson brackets of q and p with the quantity f. I will only do it explicitly for q using the same reasoning as above. You can try the one with P yourself. Now I will list some properties that will be helpful in evaluating expressions involving Poisson brackets. All of these can be easily proved. Poisson brackets exhibit asymmetry in f and g. That is, if you interchange them, the bracket will pick up a minus sign. Also, any linear combination of two quantities f1 and f2 can be evaluated by splitting the bracket. The constants can be written outside. We also have a rule for products, and one for time derivatives. Another important property is the Jacobi's identity, which is a little painful to prove. Finally, we have the Poisson theorem which states that a Poisson bracket of two conserved quantities evaluates to another conserved quantity. So that was it about Poisson brackets. Thank you for watching.